Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome back to the Wayne Scott series. This is video number five in this series. So if you stumbled into this and you missed the first four videos, I'll put a playlist link below where you can go check those out. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to go around windows and doors with your trim work to accommodate your wainscot. Now what I'm using as my casing is this back band right here. And I've talked about this pretty much in every video because it is so important. We're going to use that same casing around this window. Now, like they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat and that is actually referring to catfish. So don't freak out for the cat lovers out there. It's, it's catfish. You skin the catfish. All right, this, this is taking a, a bad turn. There's more than one way to do this. I'm going to go traditional picture frame casing on top, stool and apron on bottom. There's so many ways you can go around a window with wainscot. We've done it many ways, but I'm going to show you one way. All right, real quick. I just wanted to point something out that, um, yeah, this right here is still not on. So if that's bothering you, <laughs> I wanted to answer something real quick because I know the question is going to come up. Do you have to case your windows if you want to put wainscot in that room? And the answer is no. If you don't want to case your windows, but you still want to have a wainscot application in that area, you, you don't have to case the windows. We've done wainscot before where let's say we have this panel here. We just stop it right here and do returns before the woodwork turns into this window jam right here. A lot of people want to do that because they already have custom blinds or Roman shades or whatever that they have in the home. And there's no clearance between the window jam and the whatever kind of window covering they have to put any kind of woodwork right here in this area. Now with me, since I'm getting rid of these mini blinds, I'm going to go ahead and case this window and then we're going to come back with Roman shades. So no, you don't have to case your windows. You can keep your existing blinds. You can keep your existing Roman shades and just stop the wainscot prematurely right here. Threw those other ones in there the other day. Yeah, they've been waiting to do that for a while. Now, if we're gonna build this window casing in one unit, like the way I'm showing you, there's gonna be a few things we're gonna need to know before we get started. The first one is gonna be, where does our casing end? If you watched video number two, you know this line right here represents where our casing ends. And I made that marking tool so I could easily mark this. Now, just for the sake of showing it to you in this video, it's just going to go right here. That's our casing. And then we have an inside jam that's going to fit just like that with the 3 16 reveal. So that's what that would look like when it turns into the window. So we're going to need to know this. Now that we know where that is, we made our pencil line done. We're going to do this same thing to both sides of the windows. This line right here is very important because it's going to tell us how long to make our stool. The stool of the window is a part of the, as a trim piece that sits in here like this. So you probably have these in your house. They're called window stools. Some people call them seals, but actually the rough framing is called the seal. So the stool is the piece of trim work that goes on top of the seal. So with that, once you have this in place, you need to determine, do you want the horn of your stool to hang over a reveal on your casing. So you see, I can make it flush right there. So it's just flush like that. But traditionally, you would have it hanging over. And in this case, I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch because this is a three quarter inch board and I think the reveal would look nice if the horn was revealed three quarters of an inch. Now the horn is simply the part of the stool that hangs over in, on the wall side. So that this portion of it is called the horn. You can make it way out here or you can bring it in and have a short horn, which is usually what you would have if you just had a horn with no trim. That's what we had in this house. It hung out about an inch and a half is typically what they'll do down here in Texas. And it's just a stool and an apron, which an apron is this board. Now I'm moving quick. So hopefully you're, you're following me here because there's a lot to cover in this. So once you have, your casing 
reveal marked and once you know how far you want your horn to stick out past your casing now you can get a measurement for the total dimensions and length of your stool so once we know that we can find it out here now another way i'm just holding it up to show you but what i can do is measure from this pencil line and then go over and measure to the pencil line i have over there on the right side of the window and i could just add an inch and a half because i'm having a three quarter inch here and a three quarter inch over there inch and a half and that's what i'm going to do and to help me do that i'm just going to tack in a little piece of scrap right here purpose of that is just so i can hook my tape to it 75 and 7 eighths Seventy-five and seven eighths. Then we add an inch and a half because we got three quarters on each side, and that's going to give us our total length of our stool as seventy-seven and three eighths for this window here, with everything taken into account. Now that we know the length of our window stool, the next thing we need to find is the width. How wide is this stool going to be from the window unit itself to project past the wall and accommodate the window casing? Well, the same way we use the window casing to determine the length of our stool, we're gonna use the window casing to determine the width of our stool. Now our window casing goes on like this, like I've already shown you. So we just run a tape measure and measure to the back band here and add three quarters for our reveal. But since it's kind of hard to see that, we can just flip the casing around so the back band is reversed and it's towards the inside of the window. And for the sake of getting a measurement, we can see right there, we're at six inches. So then we would just add three quarters to this. So the overall width of our window stool would be six and three quarters. Now that we know the length of our stool and the width of our stool, I'll grab a one by eight. I'll cut it to the length, rip it to the width, and then it'll be ready for us to cut out the horns for it. So I'm just going to cut that factory edge off first. Now one tool I really recommend that I believe is necessary for doing any kind of trim on windows is this right here. This is a combination square and it's just a 12 inch ruler on this one. And then it has this square attachment that slides into the groove of this ruler, keeping everything square for whatever it is that you're working on. Now this is handy because you can just put this up against the wall and push the ruler into the jam to tell you the dimensions of the jam depth. And then also you could put this on the jam and push it out towards the horn and that'll tell you the dimensions of the horn and that's what we're going to do right now so here's how we can figure this out so we'll go ahead and tack our casing where it goes on our reveal line just tack it there again and then we would just take our combination square push it against our window jam here and then push the ruler out until it revealed three quarters past the um, the casing here then we would tighten it up and then that would give us how long to make these horns. That's why I like this tool because then I could just take this and then trace it onto the workpiece and then I can also trace it on to the other side. It's going to be the same exact um, length for that horn over there as well. So over here on the other side of the window now you can see my reveal line and you don't need to tack a casing in on this line every time. I'm just showing you that for the sake of the video. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just pushing this combo square against the jam and then pushing it out till it's three quarters past it. So then we could tighten that down and then that would be our horn dimension right there. Now to mark this is pretty easy. We're just gonna bring our square in with the depth that we set and then we're just gonna mark it in this general area about how deep our jam is Boom, we're done. That's simple. So this time, instead of putting the square against the jam like that, 
we're going to go ahead and put the square against the wall and then push the ruler into the jam. Same exact thing, just reversed. Then we're going to tighten that up and that's going to give us our jam depth right there. So back to our workpiece, we're just going to come from the back side now. So we're just going to mark that point of intersection and now this gets cut out. And then all we have to do is just uh, hold this here and make our line straight. And the same thing here. So now that we know this material right here is gonna be removed where this X is, what I've done to better help illustrate this to you is I made a mock-up of my casing and jam. This is similar to the one I made in video two. But what I'm gonna do, you see that 90 degree pencil line right there? I'm just going to line this up with that 90 degree pencil line as best I can, holding the camera and doing this one-handed. So we'll say about right there. Now one other thing you'll note is that this piece right here is too short for my actual jam, but that's fine. It's gonna give us the idea. When I make the jam, obviously I'll make it the real um, length right here. So let's get a look at this. This is how our casing and our stool is gonna look together. It's gonna sit right there and look really powerful. All these nail holes are from me tacking this stuff up and showing you guys stuff. But we've got our three quarter inch reveal here. We've got our three quarter inch reveal here from the front. And that looks good to me. One thing we're gonna do, we're not gonna have this ingrain exposed. We're gonna miter that and then cap it. So we're gonna keep moving right along here, but I thought this would be a good way to show you how this is gonna look when it's all wrapped up. So to cut out this material right here, I'm just gonna use a combination of the miter saw and the table saw. The miter saw will take care of this line right here and the table saw will take care of this cut right here. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise my blade guard so I can see exactly where my teeth are and then turn my shadow line on and then move this how I need to move it to get it right lined up. And then as I make this cut, you're gonna see me kind of tilt the material like this. And the whole purpose of that is to get the cut that I need done on the miter saw because if I just hold it like that, it's not gonna cut all the way through the material that I need cut out. So we'll go ahead and make this cut. And you can see right there, we have our cut line straight to our pencil. And for this cut, it's gonna be the same principle. Just gonna move the fence over to where it lines up with my pencil mark, and then just make this cut. Now this one, I don't have to do any weird tilting because the way the table saw is orientated, it's gonna cut all the way through what I need. Then we have our nice clean cut right there. So now we'll go ahead and do our dry fit to make sure this is gonna fit. So when we build it as one unit, you know, we don't want it too tight. There we go. I was gonna say, if, if we're doing this as one unit, we don't want this just super tight because we wanna have that play where we can kind of move it around. And you can afford that play when you're building it as one unit because the whole thing is already nailed together. You don't have to worry about, you know, butt joints coming together or miters that might open up because it's all one piece, it's all glued up. So we're good. We have a little bit of play. That's gonna come in perfect when we go to install this as one unit. All right, so I'll try to show you all this as best I can with one hand. But what we have here is a nice clearance against the window itself. So we're nice and tight here. We're tied up against the jam and we're tied up against the wall as well. Now what you'll notice is I have these bull nose corners, but I just 90'd that piece right there that I just cut on the table saw and the miter saw. Here's why that's not gonna matter. So I got my mock up again. And when I put that in place, 
you can see it hides everything nice and well. So we're right on our pencil line right here for our reveal. And then we're all three quarters over here, so we're good to go. And the same thing on the other side. All right, so this is looking good, guys. But the last thing I think I'm gonna do in this video is go ahead and take care of this end grain right here that I don't like. So I'm gonna make a miter right here, and then we're just gonna glue it together, let that dry overnight, and then we're gonna to have to pick it up with casing all of this tomorrow. All right, real quick change of saws right here because the other blade was too big to do this task. So if I'm gonna miter this horn right here, I'm gonna cut 45 in this direction. The other blade would have cut into all this material. So I had to grab this smaller miter saw. This is the seven and a quarter Milwaukee. It's gonna allow me to make that cut without getting into this material over here. Now I just gotta cut the return piece, glue it on, and this stool is done. All right, so to cut this return, the only thing I have to do is measure how wide this horn is right here, cut something on the table saw that that's that wide, and then just cut a 45 degree return on it. It's really that simple. Two and three eighths, maybe about right there. I'm gonna just push this thing through. This thing is almost perfect, actually. All right, so now we have this return piece cut and you can see it's nice and smooth right here. No more end grain like that. And all I'm gonna do is simply just glue it on here and it's gonna be good to go. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side as well. But that's a nice way to eliminate that end grain and just make your work just look nice. Could you sand it down with the end grain? Yeah, you could, but this doesn't take much longer and it saves you time really in the end when you're painting. All right, here's how we're gonna handle this. We're gonna be using miter clamps again, which I used on the door casing. If you missed that, it's just these spring clamps that open up as you pull these pliers apart and then it squeezes whatever's in the middle with really sharp points. So we're gonna be using this and some glue. Now I'm just using tight bond too. I don't really care what tight bond I use because I don't work outside, so whatever I have works for me. Um, but I'm not gonna be using CA glue for this, and a lot of people wonder why I don't use CA glue on everything. Well, CA glue doesn't do too well with pine. It's really good with MDF and foam, and that's what you see me use a lot of, a lot of MDF, not really foam. But it does well, work well with foam. But with pine and hardwoods, it's not, not the best. There's other, other wood glues out there and tight bond is the one that everyone pretty much uses. So once I got this miter lined up, I'm just gonna hold it right there and then I have a clamp in here and then I'll just clamp this on here and that will hold it as it dries. Now one tip about these pliers is you kind of want to have them ready so you can just like it's laying there and you can just pick it up and squeeze it you don't want to have to go find the clamp so we'll get this pushed in there we'll clean that squeeze out here in a second but same thing and that will hold it 
Good. That is how you measure, cut, and do mitered returns on a window stool just like this. And unfortunately, I couldn't get to the whole window today, so we'll get to that tomorrow because this time of year, it's pretty much like we're just racing against the sun going down, but it does give us some beautiful sunsets. I love the sunsets this time of year. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video, but let me know if you have any questions. I did foresee one question that would come up, and I wanna talk about that real quick, and that is if you weren't going to square this off right here and you just wanted to put this stool, how would you go about that? You would just use a contour gauge like this, and then I would tell you how to wrap around that bull nose right there. So these are really cool. And I'll link this in the description too if y'all want to check it out. The next video in this process is going to be the window jam and the casing and then installing that to our stool that we built today so we can put it all in as one. I never thought that I would have a video just on the window stool, but you saw how in-depth it was and how you have to think like three or four steps ahead, especially when you're doing it for a wainscot. It's really important. So hopefully you found this valuable. So that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.